Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name's Jason Newland and this is Let Me Bore You to Sleep. And today, what day is it? It's Sunday, the... <laughs> I don't know what day is I'm trying to keep track of the year this this year. What days? Sunday the nineteenth of January. And according to my phone, it is Martin Luther King Day. So hey. Um Happy birthday, I think. I don't I'm not I'm not sure. I genuinely don't know if the Martin Luther King Day is the day he, celebrating the day of his birth I'm guessing it would be celebrating any other day um, but maybe I'm wrong but uh, happy Martin Luther King Day to everybody out there um, Did I say only listen when you can safely close your eyes? I don't know. Uh, what's that? I want to clear something up. It's not not a major thing, but I just want to say that uh, in my last recording, I was talking about a message that I got uh, that was mentioned in <laughs> asking me to to try not to whistle when I talk. Oh, it's a squeaky chair. I'm surprised the squeaky chair doesn't got, get, get complaints. But I just wanted to um, just let it be known that I'm not upset by that comment, that message that was sent to me. I just thought I might as well just tell people and, and make fun of the comment and it gave me something to talk about, really. But so just to let the person that wrote the comment know that it's fine. Don't worry about it. Seriously, it's it's okay. It's not it's not a big deal at all. I mean, so because I, I think the person that sent me the comment and they've com they've sent me a message la afterwards, uh, worried that I was upset, but I'm genuinely not. Really, I'm fine. Um, I am upset over some other stuff, but that's got nothing to do with this, this is personal life stuff, you know, um, but, you know, we're all upset about something, aren't we, sometimes, but it's okay, but yeah, don't worry, honestly, it's fine, it's not, it's, it's not important to me, um, because there's not really anything I can do about, well, when I'm talking, As far as how I sound, I would probably put more effort, uh, let's say with the whisper, deep sleep whisper hypnosis, I, um, I, I concentrate to make sure that I'm whispering, because sometimes it would be so easy to go from and then, as you feel really calm, it's really good, you know, to sort of go in, in between whispering and talking softly. Uh, it'd be quite easy to sort of uh, lose track of the whispering bit, especially as I tend to fall asleep a bit when I'm making them. So they're quite difficult to make in a sense of like the sleepy ones even these sometimes I fall asleep doing but it's not that often it depends when I do them if I'm really tired really tired when I make a recording regardless of what it is I have a tendency of drifting a bit you know but more so with the 
the sleep hypnosis recordings like with the sleep hypnosis weekly podcast I'll practically fall asleep doing those but I will try and keep alert because I need to keep track of what I'm saying uh, with the the podcast of relaxation hypnosis for stress anxiety and panic attacks I don't fall asleep making those unless um, I don't get too tired making those unless I'm doing a specific just a relaxation session you know like going through my body uh, some kind of body scan progressive relaxation that kind of thing and then I do because I basically do what I talk about when I do hypnosis stuff I do what I'm talking about so if I'm talking about imagining you know, focusing on your left hand and imagining you know all the worries moving from your mind into your left hand making a ball of of mud and you focus on that and then you crush the mud with your hand and just watch the the particles of the mud falling onto the floor and then the wind blowing those uh, bits of mud that dust the wind blowing the dust away so I'd actually I'll actually be doing that myself in my own mind while I'm doing it I'll be visualising that while I'm talking about it so if I'm talking about sleeping and imagine you, uh, I don't know you've got a, a hot air balloon and you're taking all the stresses and uh, you know problems and worries and anxiety out of your body and you're, you're putting them into a hot air balloon the basket in a hot air balloon and you then you release the rope that's connected the hot air balloon basket to the ground and you watch the hot air balloon the hot air balloon rising into the sky taking away those worries and that stress and you can feel it in your body you feel really relaxed as the the basket with the hot air balloon is just rising further into the sky and the further it gets away the further you can feel that those stresses are moving further away you can physically feel it you can feel that distance and I'm imagining that in my own head as well while I'm saying it So yeah, there was a reason I was telling you that and I've got no idea what it is. Yeah, just, I suppose when I make these recordings, uh, the Let Me Boy You To Sleep ones, it's a little bit different because I'm not really doing sort of guided, re like guided relaxation. Although I might do, I might do one just to surprise you. I might come on here and actually do a, a long hypnosis recording one day. And you'll be like, what on earth was that? What's he doing? He, what, 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 what? <laughs> but uh, there's not necessarily a topic or a subject or even um, trying to sound relaxing or trying to sound calm when I make these recordings sometimes I will I'll slow down my speech and and I like to play around I like to do different things and so yeah I just I you know not just to the person that sent me the comment or the message but to anybody that's listening, I appreciate you listening. But I also appreciate that not everything I do or say is going to be um, 
was going to say palatable, that's probably not the right word, but it's not going to, not everything I say is going to be agreed with by everybody, but I'm not here to be agreed with. Um, it's, I'm, not, I'm not here to win an argument. I'm just here just to talk. Just talk. That's it. So there's no, it's not a competition. And I also realised that as the podcasts are getting more popular, the more people that like what I do means that there will be more people that don't like what I do. And I've got to kind of acknowledge that. I guess if I'm if I'm able to move on without being personally affected by criticism, but I don't like criticism, and I don't think anybody does. I really don't. Um, and I reckon I'm probably there's a part of me that's very critical. And I don't like that part of me that does that. I think I've inherited it. And I find myself thinking what other people have said out loud to me, perhaps when I was younger or even now. And I don't like it. But I'm kind of doing the same myself. Either towards myself or towards other people. Very critical about drivers. Drivers at speed. The like, just something about it that winds me up. Just, ugh. Um, I just want to shout at them. Drivers that don't stop when I want to cross the road. But on the same side, when a driver, when a car does stop. I'm ever so grateful. I do. I'll give them flowers, chocolates, you know, give them a big hug and a kiss, buy them a new car. I'm, you know, I mean, so I do. I kind of, it works both ways. But if someone doesn't stop, that's life imprisonment. That's, that's, oh, guillotine time. So yeah, I kind of go both ways, you know. There's also a reward for. <laughs> I'd be the worst dictator. That's why I would never get into politics. Because I'm really open-minded and cool and calm, generally. But if I had the responsibility of making changes, I think I'd be awful. I really do. I recognise that in myself. There's, I'd really be controlling and want every single person to do what I told them to do and to agree with me at all times. I don't want that now. Well, I suppose I quite like that, but not controlling bit, but I don't expect people to agree with me. But I think I'd be lying if I said that I didn't want people to agree with me. It would be quite nice. Can you imagine going through life and everyone agrees with you? Like, wow. It'd be the complete opposite to what my life has actually been like. So I suppose that's probably why. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I'm just talking. I love it. But I would have... Um, I thought if the car went over the speed limit, it'd just explode. But a friend of mine said that that's a bit overkill. I mean, literally. It'd possibly wouldn't be uh, very pop very popular. So my other solution with speeding cars is this. If the speed limit, whatever the speed limit is in your country, whether it's uh, 60 miles an hour, 70 miles an hour, I know some people go by kilometres an hour, we, we don't hear but if it's 80 miles an hour, you know, whatever the top speed limit is on a motorway. I mean, in Germany, I think they have quite a high speed on their um, German 
well, whatever the equivalent is of the motorway. Well, it's the motorway, isn't it? But they've got a name for it, haven't they? And um, I suppose everyone's got a, a name for a motorway everywhere, I guess. But whatever the top speed limit is, then that, it seems logical that that should be the fastest that the car can go. Which means it never needs the police to look out for speeders on the motorway ever because no car will ever be able to go that fast. And my friend, we said, yeah, what should really should be with the technology that we have, every car should have a little a box in it, not a cardboard box. I mean, and if it was a cardboard box, it'd have to be the size of like a, an electronic toothbrush, that kind of box size, not big, but f perhaps fit in your glove compartment. Who wears gloves? You know, do, do people really used to keep gloves in there? I don't know. So, you'd have a... But it would be kind of something that would be traceable so that whenever you went into a different zone, for example, when there's by zone, I mean, um, you might go from a 30 mile an hour zone to an area where you can do 40 miles an hour. Or there might be a road that you're only allowed to do 20 miles an hour for whatever reason. So your car automatically cannot go over the speed limit of that area. Which means there'd be no more speeding. I mean, it would save thousands and thousands of lives every year. Um, and also people wouldn't, you know, peak the amount of people that might lose their jobs because they lose their licenses because they keep speeding and, you know, things like that. So it just make a, a nicer society. But, <laughs> and I probably, with most, probably all countries maybe, or they rely on that money for no speeding tickets. They need people to speed so they can give them speeding tickets. They almost want people to speed. The government need speed. <laughs> they need people to be speeding. But they're, they don't want people to speed too much. So if there's a 30 mile an hour um, limit they just want people to do maybe 31, 32 miles an hour 33 don't want people to do be doing 40 or 50 no that's naughty but 30 maybe just a few miles over the hour that's a you know that's a speed and fine a speeding ticket which gives loads of money to the government So, oh, okay. And as a non-driver, I'm kind of in the I'm in a position of talking about something that I know nothing about, but it doesn't stop me. That's a good thing about it. Is it doesn't stop me. I haven't got the first idea about driving. Never driven a car outside of a couple of driving lessons. Um. I'll tell you about that in a minute, but yeah. But this, this, I used to have this friend in Nottingham, and uh, I think he was friends with uh, Robin Hood, I think he was. Uh, they were lovers. And we, he got a speeding fine, and even though he lived there, they kept changing the speed limit for different roads. So it'd turn a corner and there'd be another speeding zone. 
So you'd have to keep slowing down, speed, not, you didn't have to speed up, but, you know, it'd be 30 miles an hour, then 40 miles an hour, then 20 miles an hour, you know, because it was in the countryside and bridges and there was trees and clouds in the sky. That's not really relevant, but the changes in the speed limits were changing constantly. And even myself, as a, a, a basically a, a dictator when it comes to drivers, I, I could see an issue there. I thought, oh, that's not right. That really isn't right. Because I, I could see it was upsetting him, and I was, you know, I was staying with him for a couple of days, so I didn't want him to be upset because he might not cook me any food. So I wanted him to, and he, you know, I wanted him to buy me beers and basically just look after me. So. I didn't, want, I didn't want him to like I expected him, <laughs> I expected him to as the royalty that I am at the, <laughs> I was at that point that's before I left the royal family uh, I was going to move to Canada but I uh, I decided just to stay in England I used to have ginger hair dyed it and uh, yeah it's alright and uh my driving lessons. I had driving lessons in 1991, the first one. I was living in London, East London, and I'm, I'm going to generalise here because I've not been in every single road in East London or or London itself. But there's a heck of a lot of roads where there's parking on both sides of the roads. So two cars can't actually go by each other. I don't mean purchase each other. But I mean can't drive past each other. So they always have to pull in in, in a gap and let the other car go past. Now that didn't suit how I wanted reality to be didn't fit in with my reality. My reality is I drive through, everyone gets out of my way. And and also in my reality, people didn't park on the side of the road. All the roads are clear. You can drive past other cars. And it was just easy. It's like how roads were built to be. But uh, that wasn't the case, and I didn't like it. I didn't. It didn't. It didn't really fit. It didn't sit well with me. You know, because I figured, well, okay. If I pretend that I accept that the cars are parked both sides of the roads, and bearing in mind little roads, little roads, and. And there are parts of London with big roads, like wide roads, wide pavements, but not huge amounts. You know, if if you go into the West End, of course, there's lots of big roads and big pavements, and even parts of East London, there's some. But those are the parts where there's possibly the more expensive parts. Where there's, you know, nice house, not nice houses, expensive houses. A nice house doesn't have to be expensive, does it? I've got a nice flat, but it's not expensive. So, yeah. Um, so, I kind of put me off a little bit because I didn't, especially haven't been royalty, I, di- I didn't, I didn't want to be. I wanted to be able to give a uh, right of way the whole time and pretty much drive where I wanted, when I wanted, and everyone just move out of my way. That was... 
I want it to have the same experience as I have when I go on a bus and people move out of my way. Admittedly, that's because I, I never wash, but I just like, I'd like to have that with a car as well, you know? And, uh, or maybe whenever on a pavement, people get out of my way in the pavement. It's because I've got a crocodile as a pet. So it's, it's those little things that help. But in a car, you can't have that. I mean, if you had a lion in the back of the car, a lion, not lying, lion, as in, rawr, those things. That's not going to make any difference to the traffic. The car's still not going to get out of your way. So I, I gave up. I thought, nah, nah, mate, nah. So I decided not to do it. Plus, the amount of times I would walk to the tube station and I would overtake the same car over and over again walking down the road. I'd overtake buses because it was the traffic was just ridiculous. And I thought, it's actually quicker. It's quicker than driving. It's quicker than getting the bus just to walk. Apart from those times when it wasn't. So, the next time I did driving lessons was in 2004. Yeah, I remember I was living in this, this place. Uh, this room at the top of a house no central heating that should be illegal shouldn't it how can you rent a room out that has no heating in it I don't know if you're allowed to do that anymore but yeah it was a big room um, yeah bigger than this room I'd say or maybe Maybe not, maybe, yeah, it probably was bigger than this room. I'm in the living room at the moment. Or maybe it was the same size. It'd be difficult because I'd have to take everything out and put the bed in, a single bed, and a, and a couple of bookcases. But the thing is, although it was quite a big room, it had a, a slanty, window thing you know the what do they call them they st so the room wasn't square part of the room you couldn't actually walk to the wall because the the wall was slant it was slanted and then there was a, a window on top of it which is the window, I had, I think, I think I had two windows in there, one at the top and then one that I could look out of uh, as well, because the one at the top I couldn't look out of because it was, well I could look out of it because it was a window, it was see-through, but it was uh, the sky and, uh, you know, or did I have a window? I might not have done. There's definitely a slant in the wall. Which for me, although the room was quite big, it took away a quarter of the room. Because I couldn't actually stand against the wall. Not that I used to spend a lot of time spending against, you know, standing against the wall. I mean, it stopped really being a my hobby, probably the middle of 2004. I kind of I took up Wing Chun kick, um, Kung Fu instead but during that time I thought I'm going to give uh, driving lessons a go why not yeah yeah why not so I did now the problem I had 
was the person that was teaching me was I say young lad I mean I was still fairly young then I was still 33 so I wasn't exactly old um, but he was he couldn't have been more than 20 21 and he and this this sound this is going to sound negative but I'm just being honest he, he was way too enthusiastic for me it really was. It was. It was practically um, cheering me on and saying, "Yeah, we can do this. We can do that." But it was moving at about a hundred miles an hour, and it might surprise you, but I don't really, I, I don't move around too quickly. You know, I'm not really into that. Uh, into f- generally, some I've got friends that talk fast. Who I care about, and it's fine. But generally, I, I'm not. I'm quite. I'm a, you know. I talk slowly. Everything I do is pretty slow. And this person was way too, way too optimistic. And for some reason, it annoyed me. And I, I just wanted a quiet lesson to take me time you know and just see how it goes that's all I wanted didn't you know wasn't asking for much just that well he got very enthusiastic Sometimes he was almost shouting, he like, "Don't drive in the middle of the road. You can't. You got to drive on your side of the road. You got to drive on. You're driving on the wrong side of the road. You're too near the pavement. You're on the pavement. Get off the pavement." And he just, he was ever so excitable, and I just, just having him in my ear. <laughs> Watch out for the traffic. Watch out for the zebra crossing. You buy a school, you can't go this fast when you're near a school. It's just like, just, you know, it really just got on my nerves after a while. And uh, I just packed it in. I thought, you know what? I've had enough of this. I've had enough. So yeah, I packed. I packed in the driving lessons. I never looked back. Never looked back. So what I do is look back. Sometimes I look forward. I actually had a dream last night. It was a really weird dream. Part of it was weird. It might have been today. I don't know. It was some time when I was laying down on the bed, and I spent the whole day laying down on bed pretty much since I last made a recording I spent a long time laying down I had one of those days and I dreamt that I couldn't stop a car that I was in but the simple fact is I don't know how to stop a car I don't know how to start a car I don't know I don't know I know you have to turn the key and um Is it the gas pedal? Do you have to push down on? And then the... I don't know, something else. Accelerator or something. But I never understood all the gears. See, when when I was a cyclist, and I use that term very, very vaguely, when I had a bike... For me, gears were easy to figure out. You know, it's. I was happy just to have a, a bike with no gears, never cared. But then I got a racer when I was 13, I think. Uh, so it's a nice bike. And. 
it had I don't know how many gears it had loads but it, was, it had some gears and I noticed a difference you know when going up hills changing the gear and it was just so much easier to get up the hill with the gear changes but in a car I couldn't physically feel it. You know, I just like, I can't change the gear now, change the gear. Why? Why am I changing the gear? We're still flat. We're not going up a not going up a hill. We're just why why change the gear? And let's put it down to the to the standard one. You know, what, what difference does it make? And I remember he pulled me over. He said, "Look, I don't mind you asking me questions, but can you please look at look ahead?" You know. I said, "Look ahead." He said, "No, look ahead. Look where you're driving." I said, "What's your, what's what are, you, what are you talking about?" He said, "You literally turn your whole body and look at me when you're talking to me, and you're supposed to be driving and looking the other way." I said, I thought you were driving. He said, what do you mean? I said, well, I thought you had control of the car. You're able to stop it and stuff, aren't you? He said, well, yeah, technically. I said, what do you mean, technically? He said, well, yeah, I can. So what are you talking about then? I said, what do you mean? I said, well, I knew that you, well, you, you know, I figured that you could have control of the car so I didn't need to what yeah I thought you could control the car in fact I thought for the last half an hour you have been controlling it and you've been driving it no I haven't oh one of us must have been oh well, I actually had a little nap so yeah, it didn't really go to plan. I wonder how many people listening to this are thinking, who's who in that conversation? Which one was the driving instructor and which one was Jason? Nobody knows. Does anybody really care? Do anybody care at all? So it's Sunday today. Another Sunday. By the way, I want to recommend something for you. If you... Um, there's a radio show. There's a radio DJ called... Or it's actually there's... Uh, podcast called the Nick Abbott Habit so Nick Abbott Habit that's the podcast name he's a DJ he does uh, he's on LBC radio on Friday and Saturday nights he's very funny he is funny and um, he's on at 9 9 p.m. to no 10 p.m. to 1 p.m. And I'll actually sit and listen to him for three hours on a Saturday night and a Friday night rather than watch television. That's how entertaining he is. I'm not just listening just for something to do or for background sound. I'm actually listening because he takes calls and the people, he seems to get like some of the worst callers that really phone up to have a go at him. And he just makes fun of them. And he's he's even got what I've noticed is people phone up and they're fans of his, but they're almost they disagree with him. It seems like they're phoning up for him to to make fun of them. So yeah, he's uh 
his podcast was called The Nick Abbott Habit. So, you know, just just giving you a little insight into my life, what I do. I didn't get to watch it last night, but I did on Friday. I sometimes forget it's on. Um, but yeah, it was on Friday and I watched, I listened to it. And he's just funny. Some of the things that people come out with when they call him up. He just, just renting. It's, uh, he had one on there and the bloke, I'm not sure if it's a man or a woman, but um, they were literally shouting at him. And he was trying to talk to them, but they were ignoring him. So he just put them on hold, sort on mute, and he'd be talking to the audience. And he'd come back on, and they'd still be talking. And he'd be, then he'd come back and talk to the audience again. And he could go on for like 10 minutes. The person would still be yelling and shouting there, yeah. and it's just funny. It's almost, you know, I was going to say you couldn't make it up, but you probably could. But it's it's entertaining. It really is. Um, yeah, he's quite. I suppose. In some terms, you could call classroom as a bit controversial because, you know, for some of the things he says, but the is not held by the same standards as the BBC broadcast thing where, you know, it's not... With the BBC, I don't think you're kind of allowed to have much of an opinion about anything when it comes to radio and stuff but because LBC he just says whatever he wants to say and yeah it's quite funny the other radio show that I listen to fairly regularly is Steve Allen his show starts at 4 in the morning till 7 so I don't always listen to the whole thing because I quite like to be in bed by about five, six really at the latest. And because the other day on, what day was it? Was it yesterday? All my troubles seem so far away. It was Friday. Friday I got woken up by the postman. putting letters to the door but making a heck of a honestly I was like I don't know what he was doing it's like he was using some kind of toolkit to get the doors get to get the letters through the letterbox really making a, a fuss and I mean half the things that probably even more than that I'd say probably 60% of what comes through my letterbox is junk mail and I don't recall post the post office or the postman, postwoman, postal service, or whatever you want to call it. Um, I'm so PC, aren't I? And the I don't I don't remember them delivering leaflets. I just don't recall that happening. That seems to be quite a new phenomenon they used to deliver letters do you remember those things I mean I know perhaps people don't write letters anymore and I'm one of those that doesn't write letters anymore I don't even send recently I've not even bought cards I just go online and buy the cards online and send them send them in the post still I don't do e-cards because um, I only really send cards to a family and an e-card to remember your family is well it's just it's a nothing isn't it a picture on a screen is it, there's no 
it would be nice for a friend but I don't think it would if I sent my dad a birthday card an e-birthday card in an email on a screen that he had to look at his phone to see it I don't think he'd be hugely impressed with me not that he's ever been impressed with me but I think he'd be even less that would be like what on earth is that so but I don't generally buy cards and so I'm I guess I'm one of the reasons why yet another sector of the retail business is is uh, struggling a bit because of websites like Moonpig is it Moonpig? Moonpig.com and I know another one but I, I generally use Moonpig Moonfruit? no Moonpig and it's still expensive though it's like £3.95 for a card And I'll tell you what annoyed me is I saw a card there and I thought, that's a nice card. Some lovely, lovely photograph on there. So I went to send it. I think it was to my sister. Went to send it and they said, and it came on, well, you need to personalise this. I said, okay, I am. I'm going to write, write a message in there. Happy birthday, sis. Um, that's it, really. And it wouldn't let me purchase it until I'd personalised the cover of it. I didn't want to personalise the cover. You know, the front bit of the card. I liked it as it was. And... I phoned up Moonpig, the the help desk thing, and I said, "Listen, I've got a problem." And the lady said, "Yeah." I said, "I'm online now." And she says, "No, you're not. You're talking on the phone." I said, "No, but I'm still online. I'm still. I'm. You know, I've. I've in the process." of creating a card on your website and she said oh okay I thought you meant that you were talking to me online because we do offer that service but this is an actual phone conversation using um, phone technology rather than internet technology or like an app that would be embedded in the website uh, I said yeah I'm I'm not sure where you're going with that but what were you talking about she said no I'm just explaining to you that the modality we you currently using would be probably quite an old fashioned way of communicating with a website um, when you can actually just press a button and talk to us for free or text us and it doesn't cost you anything and you don't have to ha you know, have a, a phone to do it and it can all be done on your or well, you can do it on your phone or your laptop or your tablet and I said what did you not want me to phone you she said uh, uh, I said what does that mean she said well you know um I said no I don't know she said well it's a little bit it's a little bit like if you work in a shop right let's say you work in uh, WH Smith's or you work in Sainsbury's or uh, a supermarket and there's a self help machine where you can go in and you can pay for your, your items yourself and then you know leave but instead of using that machine you go and 
queue up and you get a human being to take your money. Oh wait, I thought she was going to say more. I didn't realise that that was the end of the sentence. That's the problem with verbal and writing. Because if you hear something, you know, and if you if you read something, you can see there's a full stop. So you can, you kind of know that that was the end of the sentence. But it's not always obvious with verbalizations and I said to her okay well, what are you talking about and she said well it's the same thing it's like if you've got a self service machine then you'd use it wouldn't you I said well actually no I don't use those machines and she said you're just saying that to be awkward aren't you I said, no, I'm not. I'm, well, I am, but that's not the reason. I mean, it's partly the reason. But it's... The fact is, I don't use those machines. And she said, why? I said, because... I've just had problems with them. I don't like them. And she said, why? I said... I said, am I talking to like a three-year-old? Why? 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 Why not? Why not? Why? And she said, that was a bit rude. I said, what? You just said that I was like a three-year-old. I said, no, I wasn't talking to you then. Who are you talking to then? I'm talking to the, to the listeners that are listening to this podcast. She said, oh, hi everyone, hi, uh, my name's Susie. I said, no, that's not, it's not relevant. She said, it is relevant. I said, why is it relevant? Well, that's what I'm called. That's what my friends and family call me. Relevant to them. Yeah, I don't mean, I'm not saying that you're not relevant. I'm just saying that your name is not relevant to this particular um, part of this uh, recording. She said, well, I'm contributing quite a bit, aren't I? I said, well, yeah, probably about 5%. Probably maybe 4% of the recording, you are contributing towards that. She said, well, that then why wouldn't you want to know my name? I said, well, I don't normally do that. I don't normally introduce people. She said, well, why not? I said, because you're not real, are you? It's an imaginary conversation. That's a bit rude. It's not. Why is it rude? Well, I just told you my name. And they telling me I'm not real. First of all, I said that uh, I'm not important, not relevant. My name does. I don't need a name. And now you're saying that I don't even exist. I mean, if it's not rude, what is it? Oh, fair enough. It probably does sound a bit rude when you put it like that. And uh, she says, "We'll just get on with it, then, shall we?" I said, "Yeah." I think we should. And she said, well, where were we? I, d I don't know where we were. I really can't remember something about using a telephone or using a, um, what is it, a self-service thing in a shop. She said, yeah. That's right, you don't use self-service things, do you? I said, no, I don't. Because... Well, there's a few reasons. One reason is I don't like them. Um, I don't want to be touching a screen that lots of other people have touched with their dirty fingers. The other thing is... 
the amount of times that I was told that the item was in the wrong part or whatever um, also the amount of times that the machine didn't wasn't able to recognise the item so yeah I, I didn't enjoy the experience therefore I decided not to have the experience any longer plus I waited I thought I was going to I thought uh, what's her name is going to say something but nothing I said plus those machines take away jobs I want to deal with a human being always apart from when I'm online and she said well you're online now aren't you I said yeah but you're dealing with me and I'm a human oh wait a minute I'm not am I because I don't exist I said what was that what was what well you just said oh all that about you don't exist and then you're going nye, 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 nye. yeah well, what are you doing that for she said I don't know I said how, how can you not know she said well you're making me say it I don't know why I'm saying it I said oh come on let's just go into that again she said what was that I said it was a sound it was a sound don't repeat what I'm saying don't repeat what I'm saying Okay, can we just get back to the to the point of the card Okay, alright certainly Mr. Newland and I uh, said well there's an issue I've been I've done everything correctly and it's not working it's not going through I'm not, I, I can't process it or pay for it and she said well clearly it's not all been done correctly then has it I said okay let me tell you what it's told me the error that's come up on the screen because you're likely to ask me that aren't you she said yeah that would have been normal the normal way to have um, presented this conversation really by me asking you that to start with but it's okay if you want to mention it first seem like you're in control uh, yeah I feel you make quite a good dictator Oh really? Thanks. Oh, no problem. It wasn't a compliment. And well, basically, what it is on the screen is saying that I have to uh, personalise the front of the card. And she said, "Yeah." I said, "Well, I don't want to personalise it. I want it as it is." She says, "You want it as it is?" I said, "Yes." She said it's a generic picture. It's a generic photograph of actors posing. And you want that scent? I said, yes. So you're, you'd prefer to have pictures of people you don't even know in a, on the front of a card instead of a personalised picture maybe of the family member or whoever is that what you're saying I said, yes that is what I'm saying that's exactly what I'm saying I would prefer to have that picture that's already on the card because they look very happy it's a very pleasant card and I'm I'm pleased with it. I'm pleased with the card. And it, it fits my particular criteria when it comes to sending a card. She said, that was a bit of a mouthful, wasn't it? I said, yeah, probably. Maybe. She said, it almost seemed a bit false. 
like you're choosing your words very carefully almost trying to sound clever or something I said no no just the way I talk she said no I don't think it is you don't strike me as being particularly articulate I said what did you say articulate she said no I said articulate I said no you, you just said you, that I that I didn't come across as being particularly articulate she said no I didn't I said articulate I know what I said they're my words they came out of my mouth I said no you definitely said articulate so what is articulate then I didn't say articulate I, I, I can't even say it I said articulate I can't even say the word that you say and that I said Oh, you mean articulate? There's no such thing as articulate. Oh, you can say it then. Well, yeah, I can say it. I choose not to say it because I would never say it ever in any situation. I said, no, you definitely said it. I remember. And I remember everything. She said, everything. Everything. She said, I don't believe you. I said, everything. And she said, look, just repeating the word doesn't make it any more real. Everything. And she said, real, doesn't make it real, doesn't make it real. At this point I thought, I've had enough. And uh, I said, I'm going, I've, I've had enough of this conversation, I'm going. And she said, uh, before you go I said yeah what he said uh, what time will you be around for dinner on Sunday I said what she said well it's my birthday isn't it I said what makes you think that I want to come around she said well you're going to send me a birthday card weren't you so I assumed you're going to come around for dinner I said yeah alright then see you there I got one o'clock is that alright she said yeah and uh, I said to her, before I go, then I might as well just ask you, what picture do you want on your birthday card? She said, uh, I don't know, possibly a badger. A badger, yeah, a badger. A badger, but I don't want it just an ordinary badger, I want a photoshopped badger. I said, what do you mean, what, like playing a banjo? He said, no, no, nothing silly like that. What I want is a picture of the, the, the penguin circle in the Arctic, you know, when they're all huddled together and taking turns to stand on the outside to stop the wind and the cold. And But in the middle, I want a badger skating around on ice skates with a big hat full of fruit so I'd quite like a picture like that and I said oh, okay Lucy's Luce, Luce not silly and she said hey. I said that wasn't even a real laugh was it she said yeah it was no, it wasn't. She said, how do you know? I said, well, I lived with you for, what, 17 years. I should know what your laugh is like. 
She said, how would you know? I said, what do you mean? She said, you never made me laugh, did you? Oh, oh, that's crossed the line. That's crossed the line completely. And uh, I said, I've got to go, I've got stuff to do. And she said, uh, all right then, Whistler, I'll speak to you later. I'll see you on Sunday. I said, I could, well, wait a minute, what do you call me? She said, Whistler. So what do you call me Whistler for? She said, everyone calls you Whistler. What? what are you talking about? Didn't you know? No. Well, behind your back, everyone calls you Whistler. I said, why? Because you whistle when you talk. I said, what are you talking about? She said, everybody knows. You're, you're well known for being called Whistler. Did you not know that? I said, I said yeah, I've heard of Whistler. I didn't know it was me they were talking about. She said, yeah, no, that's you. So you're telling me that when I'm in a pub and people are saying horrible things about this whistler, how he smells of cow poo and, you know, all these other things, they're actually talking about me to me. And she said, yeah. Isn't it funny? I said, mm, kind of, I suppose. Um, I want to go now. She said, all right then, Whistler, speak to you later. Yeah, okay, bye. See you Sunday. Love you, I think. Bye. And she went. And... That was the end of that story, really. That never happened, so... I'm going to go, as I always do, in the end. So thank you for listening. Remember to be kind to yourself. Because you deserve to be happy. Lots of love.